Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. I'm your host, Dana Evans, and today's episode, I am joined with Candice James, and we have such an amazing conversation. We talk all about mindset, about thought traps, about her new book called Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Life, and all about experiences that we've had personally. Candace has had quite a few experiences in overcoming anxiety and really practicing the work that she teaches and how she operates as a coach and business owner. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this episode. And she has a new book out. So we talk about that as well. So just a little bit about Candace. So you can jump right into the episode. She is the founder of Live Your Dreams, an online group coaching program designed to help others create a life they love to live each and every day. She's also an author, which I said, the book is called Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Life, a business coach for James Wedmore's Business by Design program, and an applied mindfulness and NLP certified life and success coach. But she prefers the title Dream Life Strategist. She knows that the true meaning of life is happiness, and the only thing standing in anyone's way of achieving their dream life is their mind. She hopes to use her wealth of experience and knowledge to help millions of people get out of their head and step into their best life. Mm. So good. And she is my magical morning partner. And I actually talk all about this in the beginning of the episode, but I really get to witness her talent (laughs) firsthand in the way she coaches me in hearing about her day-to-day life because we actually talk and share with each other every single day. And I talk about this in the episode, but if you would like to pre-order your copy of her book, Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Life, go to candicejames.com forward slash book. And that's Candice, K-A-N-D-I-S, James, J-A-M-E-S.com forward slash book. And you can follow her on Instagram at candicejames.kj. All of that is how you can get in touch with her, how you can read her book. And her book, just a quick little overview. I'm so excited. My copy actually arrives on Monday. And she wrote, after a life-changing conversation on a date with a man she met on the internet, (laughs) Candace takes you on a journey as she leaves her dead-end job and unfulfilling life to travel the world and explore new people, cultures, and experiences while learning what it takes to create a life you truly love from the inside out. In this part memoir, part actionable personal development book, Candace shares her experiences and knowledge in a way that simultaneously entertains and teaches you, the reader, how to make lasting changes in your life so you too can create a life filled with joy, happiness, and success, no matter what is going on around you. It's time to stop settling for less. It's time to realize that only you have the power to create a life you love. Mm. So go get Candace's book at candacejames.com forward slash book. And without further ado, here is our amazing episode. As you heard in the intro, I am joined by Candace James, who has actually been on the podcast before uh, a while ago. And now she is back because of some pretty exciting things. Casual plug. She has a book that she freaking wrote and it is coming out on June 17th. So we'll be talking about that because y'all have to have the book, right? I mean, it's just amazing. So we're really excited about that. Um, But also she is, we're very much in line in a lot of the stuff we talk about. Candice is a master at her coaching and working with others. She is my magical morning 
partner. So the Candace, who I mention often on the podcast, <laughs> this is who it is. This is Candace. She is my magical morning partner. Yes. And she, we're just going to have such an amazing conversation. We didn't do any like super planning, but one thing that came up as we were talking is the, so magical morning in case you guys don't remember is where every morning you have somebody that you talk to and you send a voice memo that basically gives the weather report. So how you're feeling, what's going on. It gives a, like, by the end of the day, I will have done X, Y, and Z. So you put yourself kind of in the future at the end of the day and you explain what you will have completed. So you're putting yourself in that mindset. And then you say what you're grateful for and then a future vision at some point in the future of what you will have accomplished. And for, we are almost at our one year mark of doing this every day. I mean, we we miss a few days, but every single day we talk to each other. And of course, like the memos, it's not that simple. When we started, Candice, I think we thought our voice memos would be like five minutes each. (laughs) And I think our longest, um, it's like a podcast. You sent me, I think, like a 20-minute one, like a couple weeks ago. I sent you an 18-minute one. And you know what? I think it's definitely the highlight of both of our days, and it's so much fun. We've gotten to know each other so deeply. And like, it's somebody that you really get to share the nuances of daily life with. And I think more than anything, that's what has created such a special relationship between the two of us because it's it's the day-to-day details that are seemingly insignificant or inconsequential and we share them with each other. And a lot of times I share stuff with her that I don't even share with John because I'm like, yeah, I don't know, is does he care? But she cares. <laughs> and also she has to listen and <laughs> and it's nice to have someone that, you know, you send the voice memos separately so you send and you have full permission to just share and talk and express. And then the other person, when they're listening, they're fully present and just listening. And so it's really nice to be able to respond to each other. It's not like a normal conversation. And one thing that we've kind of talked about a lot, um, and I need Candace to start talking here. Sorry, I've been chatting. But one thing that she and I were just talking about was how in this memoing, voice memoing, we really start to witness each other's patterns and what kind of comes up with one another. And then we also get to witness ourselves and like where the mind kind of steps in and tries to take control and how we can reset that. Like you did this morning, Candace. So I'm going to let you come on. Sorry. Um, and she's because we're on video. So I see her like smiling and laughing and then I'm not pausing. So welcome, Candace, my magical morning partner, the best coach, just author, all the amazing things. and. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> that was a long lead-in. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long lead-in, but you said a lot of, um, you know, a lot of what I'm feeling too. So it worked out well. <laughs> so when I invited you to be my magical morning partner, neither of us knew what we were doing, and I was just like, I know I need Candice, and I messaged you out of the blue. Yes. Yes, you're like, hey, and we, because we were in, we were in Kimi's program, and and you're like, oh, you know, this is what we have to do, and I was like, I've never, I haven't gotten to that part yet. I have no idea. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and you're like, well, this is what we do, and blah blah blah. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's let's do that then. Um, and then we started being, and I can't believe we're on almost our year anniversary. I think we're like, what, 12 days away? Yeah. Yeah. So we've been doing this for, yeah, almost an entire year. And you know, one of the main reasons I chose you, (laughs) because you were the first, I I heard about this magical morning thing from Kimi and I'm like, "Eh, God, this sounds like, I don't love commitments. Like this feels like really a weird thing to commit to long-term. But the first person that came to mind even though like we didn't know each other like super, super well, like we were, but you were the first person to came to mind. And I have to say it was a hundred percent because 
I knew two things. One, how great of a coach you are. And two, that you wouldn't put up with bullshit from me. <laughs> and that's also how you are in coaching. And so I was like, I, I need someone who's like going to hold me a little more accountable than I'm going to hold myself, especially when we're talking about our lives and like this, these big visions and, you know, someone that you can be vulnerable with and share, but also who, you know, is a great mirror. And you are all of those things. Ah, uh, well, thank you. And I think it's hilarious that you're like, oh, you won't put up with the bullshit. Uh, I don't put up with bullshit, but also, um, and it's funny that like people that most people that I coach have this like saying like, oh, you're in my, you're in my head right now and you're being aggressive. And I'm like, I, ah. <laughs> I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't call myself aggressive, but I understand how that comes off. But I think it's interesting, right? There's a lot of parts about me and you that we are very different. And then there's a lot of parts about me and you that are actually very similar. And so to be able to like call out in each other, what, what we're seeing in each other and, and help each other see sort of the opposites, right? It's like that opposites attract thing. So things where I can really go, 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 or you can really go, go, go. And like to see that together and, and, help each other through like certain things. Right. Uh, but to actually think about the fact that we have talked to each other every single day, I mean, bar like maybe three or four days where like <laughs> one of us didn't talk is wild. And yeah. I think, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I think that there's definitely jumps that I took things that I did that I don't know I would have had as much strength to do if I didn't have that time each morning to sort of process that out and know that somebody was listening. And I, I think that's the thing, right? Know that you're, you're going to listen to it. Like you said earlier, and, and you have to listen. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what we signed up for. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, to process, you said that word, and it's so true. Like, yes, we can journal, and we do. Yes, it's it's nice to talk to a friend or a partner, you know, our parents, but to have someone who is too in this world, you know, you're a coach, I'm a coach, you're an author, I'm not an author, but, you know, we're, we're entrepreneurs, you know, we both have so many varied and different skills that we really complement each other and get each other. And the more, of course, that we talk and do these magic mornings, I think the more we understand kind of the behinds, behind the scenes of each other's lives. And because of that, you know, I think we feel more seen. Whereas someone who, you know, doesn't really know about the business aspect or someone who knows you more just in a casual friend and someone who's not an entrepreneur, like, we have all of those elements. And I think because of that, it's just, yeah, I feel very seen and understood and safe in your energy. And I hope you feel the same. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. And so anyway, all that is to say, I guess everyone is get a magical morning partner. If this feels interesting to you, you know, I am like number one person, like do not like to sign up for long-term commitments. And now. Wait, you know, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I have to say, I think yeah. that was one of the first things that you said to me when, <laughs> when you invited me to be your magical morning partner, you then said, and also I don't really like to commit to long-term. So can we just see how it goes? And I was like, Sounds great. <laughs> I'm not really a big like long-term commitment either. So I was like, yeah, okay. We just get to see how it goes. But I think the value that we've seen in it, I mean, one year later, we're still doing it. So yeah, magical morning partners are amazing. I can't speak for every magical morning partner. I can speak for mine. <laughs> and, it's, and it's been pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, be mindful of who you choose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you get to lift each other up. You get to see each other through, you know, we've have both of us have had many times where we're crying on the message and many celebrations on the messages and, you know, really 
you kind of bear all. Oh my gosh. Oh, makes me feel uncomfortable and vulnerable just talking about it out loud. <laughs> but it's so amazing. And because, you know, the reason also we're talking about this is because we were reflecting on how much the mind right plays into this. And Candace, in so many ways, is this is where her coaching is really and her book, right? Okay, so her book is called Get Out of Your Head <laughs> and Into Your Life. And is it a guide to thriving in the modern world? Yes. Yeah. So and the just the message like get out of your head when working with Candace and when we're talking to each other, you know, ongoing in these messages is she's so simple and direct about it. Like well, I'm just thinking of when I was telling you. So I have this couch to sell in my garage. Okay. It's been on my, I've had it for a year. It causes me so much stress. And I was telling her about it yet again this weekend. And I was telling her about all the things I need to sell in my garage. And she replied back to my message. She's like, um, how can you? It sounds like you have like a garage, like like a storage unit full of stuff, the way you talk about this garage. Like what all do you have to sell? And I didn't reply to you, but it really stopped me in my tracks because it simplified it. And it's it's two things. <laughs> it's a couch and a chair. <laughs> and your directness and just the simple way in which you talk about the type of things that get us in our head and help kind of, in a way, the way I see what you do, it's like you snap us out of it. And your book, I cannot wait to read your book. (laughs) It's on its way. I know, right? We're going to, like, I'm so excited about her book and excited to, like, gift it to all of my friends because the way that you approach this work, we all get caught up in our stuff. Like we all get stuck in our heads. Candace gets stuck in her head, right? I get stuck in my head, but the simplicity in which she helps you kind of break out of that and get back into your life, right? I know the work I talk about is a lot more like getting into your body, but she's very, I love your approach is very action oriented in a very not like aggressive action, but it is. It's like, okay, let's get you out of your stuff so that you can continue to take action that is supporting what you desire, right? The life of your dreams. And which is, uh, you know, <clears throat> her program is called Live Your Dreams, right? Yeah. Um, and it's just a really beautiful approach. So will you tell us more about how you see the mind and how you see this playing in and kind of your approach to how you wrote that book? Yes, absolutely. And can I also just thank you for such a beautiful lead in? That's amazing. I was like, oh, well, that's how she sees me. This is amazing. (laughs) It it is how I see you. I speak, I speak truths. I'm a projector, you know, I see people. So you guys can trust what I say. (laughs) She she does. And um, I don't think I've ever felt more seen in my entire life than when I've been Miss Dana's magical morning partner. So I just want to throw that out there. Oh, you gave me chills. <laughs> um, there's so much going on in my world. And, and Dana always loves to call me out on my eightness and my, you know, all these, my Enneagrams and these things. And I, I can be very strong and out there. And um, there's also a really soft side that I think not as many people see. And Dana always um, points that out to me. So I just appreciate that. So I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. And for all of your directness, it's true. You're so, you're very balanced and you have so much directness and like, all right, get stuff done, action oriented. Like you also hold so much space for so many people. It shows how much you love your work and coaching people and helping them achieve and see, get through their crap so that they can live the life of their dreams, get out of their head. And it shows because you're doing that constantly, even though you are so, you have so much on your plate, you have so much going on. She's always the first person to say, do you want to jump on a call? Should we jump on the call? I'm like, you don't have time for that. You need to rest. <laughs> so it's, it's a beautiful, it shows in your work as well of what you do. You pour your heart into it. I know you poured your heart into this book. I was there listening as, I, as you were writing it. We were magical morning partners and 
it's just, I think the reason I dreamt, I dreamt about this last night, I think I dreamt about it because subconsciously I was sensing like, because this has been going on for so long, like your book is finally coming out. I think I felt, does she realize how big of a deal this is to have written a book? We're going to just call it an Amazon bestseller book. (laughs) Get out of your head and into your life. Like you, and this is based on your program that you have. It's based on so much of your life experience and what you've been through, struggling with anxiety. She talks more about that on our last podcast episode. We'll put the number in the show notes, but your life is really fascinating and you've lived many lives really in this current lifetime. And you have so many stories of how you came to be the person writing this book, this author with these tools and doing this work in particular. Cause have, you've had like 40 freaking jobs or something crazy. <laughs> I mean, I think you're kind of on the low end, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And instead, you know, or not instead, but you've ended up here in your purpose and each day getting more and more clear of what that looks like in the future and how you show up. But your, your passion for this work, for coaching, for showing up for others, for helping them take these steps in their lives, it's, you know, it's palpable. And then you've brought it all together in such a clear and simple way in this book that makes it accessible and actionable to everyone. Thank you. And I think everything that you said, and also I think like for me, it's just, I was on the struggle bus (laughs) many, many years ago and just struggling with all these things that were going through my head all the time and self-doubt and insecurities. And in the book, I talk about how, you know, most of my school age life was spent being bullied for being too fat, too this, too whatever. My voice, people used to tell me that my voice was awful, that it sounded like a man. I remember like raising my hand for the very last time in school and somebody said to me, you know, um, why is she even talking? who would talk with a voice like that? And it's just like, wow, you know, so over sort of overcoming those things is not always easy. And I think, you know, you hear those things in your mind all the time, your mind picks up on those things and it latches on. And what I, you know, I really go into this in the book is like, it's just trying to keep you safe. It was like, that really hurt. (laughs) That hurt so bad that we're going to try not to ever have that happen again. So we're not going to talk again right? We're just not going to talk in public. We're not going to do this and we're not going to do this. And that's what happens to most people is that we start to, you know, our mind latches onto these things that hurt us. And sometimes we don't even realize to the capacity of which it hurt us. And we, our mind latches on and and it becomes who we are. We become, you know, this person who doesn't talk, who is afraid of this or who feels, you know, you know, it, it manifests in so many different ways. It could be that, You never go on dates because you think you're unworthy or you sabotage relationships or you sabotage your own work because you're scared of, you know, being criticized, right? It becomes all these different ways in which we start to live our lives. And I was doing that to myself (laughs) and I went on a journey to figure out how the heck to stop doing that. And then once I started to figure it out, it became so glaringly obvious how many other people And I'm just going to tell you, like, I mean, this is not a real statistic, but I'm going to say like 95% of people are doing nothing at all what they actually want to do because they're so freaking scared of putting themselves out there in some way. And, you know, when I was 27, I decided I was going to quit my job, get rid of my apartment, get rid of my condo, get rid of all these things that I had worked for that I was supposed to want and was supposed to do. And... Um, I quit it all and just left it. And everyone told me that I was crazy. And now people tell me, I wish I did that. I'm like, ah, right. The, the secret though, was one day I learned that I needed to get out of my head, get out of those thought spirals, get out of that self-doubt, the fear, the insecurity, the indecision, the stress, the anxiety, the worry, all those things that are just like all through our head all day and learn how to hear them, but not attach to them, hear them, but not believe them. 
and learn how to literally like just get out of my head (laughs) and get into my life and start taking action to do the things that I want to do. And so here's a question is part of, because a lot of people might say, well, I am, I'm living my life. And how do I, like, how do I know that I'm in my head and I am living my life? Maybe, how do I know if I'm living the life I want to be living? Because I think that comes up a lot is in addition to all of these thoughts that we have about ourselves, we also have all this programming of what is possible, right? People told you you're crazy for selling your stuff and you were successful. And I'm using air quotes here, right? She, I mean, she was successful in the traditional sense, but you felt that there was a there was a reason you chose to do that and it was that the success you had wasn't filling you up the way you had hoped. Absolutely. And I think you know I know that if you're feeling this way then you're going to resonate with this because it's like you're you're doing the things. You're doing the things that you thought you were supposed to do or maybe not even just that you thought you were supposed to do but that you thought you wanted to do. You wanted to do these things, you know, and you, you went out there and you did them and you, again, air quotes, succeeded in doing them. And now you're in this space and you're looking around and you're like, what have I done? (laughs) Is this all that life is? And it's, it's really about that feeling deep down inside being like, this isn't actually what I want. And for a lot of people, it's even a fear in admitting that, right? We've, we've worked so hard to get somewhere and to do something and to make X amount of money. I mean, that's success for some people, not for others, right? There's also people I work with, a lot of people who have spent so long trying to get pregnant and becoming a family and becoming a mom and becoming, you know, all these things. And then all of a sudden that happens and they're like, and now what? And I think it's that like that thing in the back of the mind of, and now what? And, and shouldn't I be happier than this? <laughs> I've worked so hard to get here and this isn't actually filling me with that joy and fulfillment and purpose and love and all these things that I thought I was going to have when I got here. And then, you know, I know speaking from me and most of my clients is like, you get there and then you think, well, now what? <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think the part about being in your head is like when you start to think of the different ways that you can possibly get out of that, right? Oh, what is it that I really want to do? One, some people can't figure out exactly what that is that they want to do. Some. Some. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's other people who do know and yet have no idea how to actually get there. And, and what do I have to give up in order to get there? Right. And it becomes this mental game of I'm not good enough. I'll never be able to do it. What if I fail? What if people laugh at me? What if I look stupid? What if, 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 and that's what keeps people stuck. So what do they do? (laughs) Right. So if you're, you might notice you fall into one of two categories. And I think the other category is possibly the people who, a person who might think this is all there is. And I shouldn't strive, right, for something else because then it means I'm not grateful and I should just be happy where I'm at. Thank you. Yes. And even, you know, for me, when I was feeling all those feels and uh, I was also sitting there being like, I should this, I should be good. I like, this is everything I wanted. Everyone's telling me I'm lucky. Everyone's telling me that I have a great life and I'm still going like, Oh, (laughs) I just don't know that I feel that same way. And so I think oftentimes what we feel is guilt and shame around this isn't enough, Mm -hmm. right? I should think that this is enough. And, you know, I don't think anything's enough unless you're waking up every day being like, heck yes, and getting out of bed, right? That's when you reach sort of enoughness. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think that's a huge thing. There's shame and guilt around a lot of it. And, and that's a shame and guilt is an awful way to feel. Is that in your head as well? Is that, you know, is that something people can get? Because what I'm seeing is 
so you have these categories of where you might be at and you might, the listener, like you might identify gently or extremely with any of those categories. And then there might be some shame or guilt either attached to like, I should have done something sooner. I don't know how to do this. I should be happy. I don't want to hurt people in my life or I don't want to let people down. There's all these other thoughts. So stacked on top. So what's, what do you see as kind of that missing link for overcoming that and starting to move out of the head and toward kind of those action steps without the shame, without the guilt? Yeah, absolutely. So shame and guilt, right? Like you, you just, you asked the question, like, are, is this in your head? Yes. Shame, guilt, fear, insecurity, doubt, indecision, all of that is happening inside of your head, <laughs> right? We create that. And, you know, there's a, there's a fairly common quote is like, I don't know, is, is similar to this, but like fear is a construct of your mind, right? Fear is often uh, one of the emotions. And let's just point that out. Fear is an emotion. It, that's all it is. Just like sadness, happiness, excitement. It is just an emotion that we feel based on a thought that comes in our mind that we attach to because we think that possibly something maybe one day, maybe possibly could happen in the future, <laughs> right? And then we get fear and then we get stuck, right? But just like, you know, I feel like fear is the one that's talked about the most as being something that's created. But anything like that, shame, guilt, self-doubt, insecurity, you know, low confidence or self-esteem, all of these things are created inside of our mind. And it's literally something that our mind's just like, bing, hey, what about this? And we're like, oh my gosh. And we like latch onto it, right? We latch onto this idea that comes inside of our head. And so the goal with everything that I do from the book to the podcast to the program is like helping people realize that these are actually just made up ideas and recognizing that, right? And recognizing this is the first step. And I know like, Dan, I know you talk about this stuff and, and you, you know, you practice this as well, but it's like recognizing that our thoughts are not necessarily true. And I think one of my favorite, you know, things to talk about is like, let's take our thoughts to court. Let's take them to court and let's be a judge and let's be the lawyers on either side. And we're going to talk about like, what is your evidence to support this? What is your evidence against this? And really make a case for so many of our thoughts because we get so caught up just because it came up. We're like, oh, that must be true. And so it stops us in our tracks. It stopped me in our in my tracks. It stops so many people in your tracks. And so how do we be able to detach from those thoughts, see them as just thoughts? And ultimately, that's what it means to get out of your head, right? Is to, to notice them, let them go, but not stay stuck up here. You know, and I think just as sort of sum that up is like, there's a lot of people I know that feel like, they can't even focus on what they really want. They can't even start to think about what they really want because every time that they sit still or every time they have a few moments, their mind automatically goes into fear, stress, overwhelm, anxiety, indecision, all these things, just the mind just goes and goes and goes and goes. And until we learn how to pull away from that and detach from all of those thoughts, we're just going to be stuck in that perpetual loop. Yes. I love how you describe the thoughts as like a ping, right? Because it is, it's like you're going along. I mean, there's some funny reels on Instagram, right? With the brand, it's like you're going along doo -doo -doo -doo, and, then like, boom, and then it just tries to derail you completely. But what happens is a lot of us end up living life dictated by these random freaking thoughts that just show up. And then like you said, we believe them to be true because we thought them. And then we let that dictate everything else. When in fact, you know, it's your thoughts are extremely powerful, but they, they don't need to, the random ones that ping into your head don't need to control what you do. In fact, you, like you said, you can in, 
choose to think it differently and start to move forward. Because if you think in that loop that you described, you'll always be in the loop and you'll create more thoughts that fulfill that belief. And if you take them to court, so I love that analogy and everyone, I mean, gosh, if you can write that down, take my thoughts to court, note to self, because what happens too, and I would love your perspective on this, Candace, is do you think that thoughts have more power when they're expressed or when they're, uh, when you're alone with them? Or either, like, how do you, how do you see that? Like, cause I know a lot of people think a lot of things, but sometimes they just keep them there and they don't ever get them out of their heads. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I think this can go two ways. I've seen it go multiple ways. Um, there is something to getting it out and speaking it aloud. I think for someone who is aware of the power of thought to speak it out loud and sort of see it in front of you. And I'm a huge um, fan. That's, I don't, that's not the word I wanted, but that's the one I'll use. I'm a huge fan of journaling, right? Getting it out on paper, allowing your thoughts to go. I know me and me and you, Dana, have had lots of thoughts or uh, chats about, you know, journaling and the effects of journaling. But I think really it depends on where you're going with these thoughts, right? There's two, there's kind of two versions here, right? Thoughts can be uh, expressed. And if you are aware of thoughts and how to choose thoughts to then speak it out loud can often make you realize that maybe this is not a good thought that we want to keep. So it can be helpful. Um, and then there's also people. And if you're unaware of the power of thought and you're with other people who are unaware of the power of thought, this is where we become, um, we come into things like gossip, <laughs> right? Gossip and, and, consistently telling our things, right? Some humans naturally love to like latch on and tell a story of their pain. And when you're with other people who feed into the pain, the more and more that you speak about it, uh, the more and more that you feel it. Because here's the thing, right? When we speak words or when we have a thought, our brain can't tell if it's real, like if it's actually happening or if it's inside of our mind. So if we think about something that happened to us a few days ago where somebody really upset us and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, and we sit there and we're, we're thinking about it, our physiological, physical response in our body is exactly the same as if it's happening. And so when we continue to think about it, just thinking over and over and over, and I, I know so many people that do this, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe they said that to me. You know, that made me so angry and this is how it happened and da, 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 and you just go over and over and over. Your body responds as if it's continuously happening. So it's triggering the fight or flight, which is triggering, you know, the stress hormones and the adrenaline and all these things, which is then exhausting your body. And it takes a prefrontal cortex offline where I don't know if we really want to get into the whole science of it that all happens inside the book, but like it all comes offline. Right. So I think there's, there's a twofold to that question, right? Sometimes people think that by venting, it's going to help them. And I think that really depends on what your intention of the venting is and who you're venting to. <laughs> and there's some people who will want to jump in and be like, yeah, that sucks. And that this, right. So now all of a sudden their stress response is elevated. Everything else about them is elevated. And now you guys are feeding off of each other, creating a negative energy. And so what needs to happen is the understanding that these are not, you know, maybe you need to talk to somebody about it because you want to verbally process it. But there's like, there's a, I don't know, like, I don't know if I'm really speaking to that question, but I think there's like a twofold to that, to what you asked, right? I think it's really dependent on what your expectation is of the outcome of speaking it out loud and who it is that you're speaking it out loud to in what form, right? And, and to make sure that sometimes by speaking it out and reliving it, because rel you're reliving it, right? That you're actually keeping yourself stuck in that loop. Whereas rather than just speak it out, I mean, speak it out once if you need to, but then how can we start to reframe it and, and move forward, right? Get away from that thought process and turn it into something that's a little bit more 
helpful because as I said earlier, we get to choose our thoughts, right? We know that's a lie. We, do, we don't get to choose always the thoughts that just pop up in our head, ping, 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 but we get to choose which ones we keep. And that's the difference, right? That's how we get out of our head. We, we choose the ones that serve our purpose and we move forward. Mm, I love that. No, you totally answered the question and it was posed as a question because I really wanted to know your take. And I think what you said there is so key is, are you aware of how you're speaking, right? You can be aware or unaware and you can be speaking about it with people who are aware or unaware. One of the things I'm constantly grateful for in our magical mornings is that, you know, my a lot of my closest friends and peers are coaches. So I don't get stuck in a lot of the stuff I used to get stuck in when I was just quote venting or having casual conversations with friends. Because when you're with someone who's super aware, as anyone who hangs out with me knows too, (laughs) maybe to an annoyance, then you get challenged and it's like, oh wait, are you sure? Oh, is that true? How do you know that? And we start asking, we start questioning, right? Taking the thoughts to court. So it can be really powerful, like you mentioned, is surrounding yourself, becoming aware on your own, which this episode will help you do. Candace's book will really help you do. And also surrounding yourself intentionally with people who are also more aware because then everybody grows. Everyone's able to move forward more easily versus getting stuck in our little hamster wheels of life is this way. My thoughts are this way. This is my experience and nothing can change. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, as I do this work, right? So when we are able to get out of our head, when we are able to recognize these thoughts and detach from them, people will often say to me, oh, so what, I'm just not supposed to feel anything? Oh, so I'm just supposed to let people walk all over me? I'm just supposed to blah, insert whatever feeling that they have. Not live in reality. Yeah, right? And just be like, oh, whatever, you know, and let people, you know, I think that's a big fear that people have when I start talking about this is like, you know, people hurt me and that's not okay. No, that's not okay. And is there anything you can do about it now? And that's the difference, right? It's like, it's that quote I love that's like, it's like drinking the poison and expecting the other person to die. When we hold on to all these thoughts in our head, the only thing that we're doing is hurting ourselves. And what we need to learn how to do is to let those thoughts go. And I think a large part of the book is letting go of a lot of the emotion that is wrapped up in thought and attachment and ideas and all these different things that we attach so much thought and mental power to that is actually holding us back from doing, doing things that we really want to do in life. And that are, it, it's just keeping us back. And that could even be as simple as just like, waking up a little bit happier in each and every day. Like my definition of success is you waking up being like, this is good. I don't care what it is. (laughs) Just that is it, right? My definition of success is not some wildly crazy career or whatever, unless that's what you really want, right? But it's about being able to understand that, detach from the thoughts that are going to keep us away and, and feeling them, fully feeling them, but also not letting them rule our lives. So if, if any of you missed that, <laughs> you can write this down too. What is your definition of success? What do you want? <laughs> it's a great journal prompt. <laughs> because again, our thoughts are moving us toward or away from what we want or don't want. And if you're living a life that you don't want, it's likely because of a lot of the thoughts that have created feelings and that have created actions that you're taking. So Candace is reminding you once again of getting to that core of what is it that you want? And then if you have stuff coming up that's preventing you from feeling or seeing that, starting to let that go. So what does letting go look like? How do you define that? What does it look like? How is it valuable for people? Yeah, letting go. Um, I think it's one of those one overused phrases that really can trigger some people, right? Just let it go. 
Uh, I know a lot of people that get triggered by that. So just recognizing that and what is really letting go. And I actually have an entire chapter on that because it's, it's big, right? It's like, it's one of the hardest things for humans to do. And yet learning to let go with ease is probably one of the most powerful things you can ever do in your life is to learn to let go with ease. So for me, I've always gone by this like three-step process and I don't know where it came from. I actually thought that I got it from uh, a book. And so I went through the whole book and was like, where is it? It doesn't exist. So I guess I, I guess I was inspired by the book. Um, and the book was the power of now by Eckhart Tolle. And, uh, what I got out of that was this three-step process, acknowledge, accept, release. And to me, that was the three steps to letting go. And I guess step one is acknowledge. And that is acknowledge that something, you're being faced with something that you don't instinctually like. That doesn't make you feel good. That kind of makes you feel crap usually, right? You're just like, oh, this thing, right? We don't need to let go of happiness. Nobody's like, oh my gosh, I can never let go of my happiness. <laughs> That's not like, yeah, hang on to that, <laughs> right? But so typically if we're actually actively trying to let go, it's something that doesn't serve us, that feels negative, right? Or it's a situation that feels negative. And so acknowledge it, see it, understand it and dive into it. Why does this make me feel this way? How is this affecting me, right? I think, again, going back to that idea of people think that it means like not actually experiencing things. No, we go deep and that's how you let it go, right? So it's about acknowledging it, seeing it, understanding it in every way, shape, and form that you possibly can, and then accepting that it feels crappy, (laughs) right? Just accepting that, accepting you don't like it. You mean we shouldn't take that and then run it and jump straight to happiness? (laughs) Uh, I mean, yeah, sorry. That's what I meant. (laughs) Be like, this sucks, but positive thinking, positive moves forward, right? Just let it go. Okay. It's done now. (laughs) Yeah. Common misconceptions. (laughs) Exactly. And that's exactly what so many people think, especially when you're like, come on, just let it go. Right. And so, no, we do not skip right to happiness. <laughs> but thank you for calling that out because there's other steps. Right. And, and the next thing is, is acceptance. And acceptance is hard. Acceptance is very difficult. In fact, you cannot let go unless you accept. But people don't often understand that that's the missing link to being able to let go. And you can only let go once you accept it as it is. And so, you know, Eckhart Tolle said, you know, there's a difference between your life and your life situation. And if there's something in your life situation that you perceive as negative, you know, we can ask our, we have three options with three ways forward, right? One, can you change something? This is a question you need to ask yourself. Is there anything about this situation that I can change. And for me, actually recently, just this past week, uh, my aunt passed away. So it's like, is there anything about the situation that I can change? No, (laughs) I cannot bring her back. She is gone. Okay. So if there's nothing you can change, you must accept this moment as if you'd chosen it. Because what's happening is when, when we refuse to let go is we're resisting what is. And what is, just for this example, is my aunt passed. So if I say, oh, but she shouldn't have gone. She was too young. You know, she, you know, that disease that got her, this and that. If I start really focusing on that, is that going to change the situation? No. The only thing it's going to do is hurt my insides. (laughs) It's going to make me feel yucky right? And so it's about accepting. So you first have to ask yourself, is there anything I can do to change this situation? If the answer is yes, well then go change it. If the answer is no, then you must accept it as if you'd chosen it. 
And so that is the acceptance. And I think that's a huge part of what most people really need to work on. Because then once you accept it, you can release it, right? Acknowledge, accept, release. But it's not until you accept it and know that there is really nothing else you can do. And it just is the way that it is. And you need to look at it like, well, that happened. And how do I move forward? What are my next steps? And that's how we can learn to let it go. But you see, if you don't accept, you're resisting and resistance is all in the head. So that again ties into the get out of the head, (laughs) right? You got to get out of your head because resistance is only in your head. The, The actuality of the situation has already happened. And so the resistance is only left in the mind. Which I think everyone can understand if, I mean, gosh, here's the little challenge is go through your day and notice how many times you're complaining about what is, whether it's the weather or the number of calls on your calendar, or like just look at yourself, watch yourself, right? Because right, we can't change what we're not aware of. Like you said earlier, we have to bring the awareness to these thoughts because they're running and running and running. And resistance is a big theme of our thoughts. It's like, oh, I don't want to do this call. Oh, I don't want to go to this thing. Oh, I wish I didn't have this. Oh, I wish the sun was out. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Complaint can show up as complaints. And that resistance, boom, right here in the head. I was, that's where I was tapping my head. <laughs> and that's, I mean, I think your book for that chapter alone is probably (laughs) worth it because this is such an elusive topic of how we can let go. How do we let go of resistance? How do we stop fighting ourselves? How do we, you know, look at what's going on and you can accept it without, um, endorsing it. (laughs) You don't have to want more ants to pass away in your life, right? I mean, right. We don't have to want more of what we don't want, but we can accept it. So that chapter alone, and is this the chapter that you just completely tore apart and redid because you realized how big it was when you were doing your book? It was one of. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) It was one of, there was a few chapters that I did rip apart. Um, that is definitely one. And that one actually got, got really, I mean, none of the chapters are super long, but that one I would say is one of the longest ones. And I realized all the different facets. So it's not just resistance, but it's attachment and attachment to so many different things, right? Attachment to physical objects, right? Those things that we have laying around our house that we won't let go of attachments to people, attachments, and this is the biggest one, is two ideas, what you thought might happen, could happen, should happen. And I think that's one of the hardest things of letting go, right? And it's what keeps people in relationships that no longer serve them for decades, right? Is because, well, you know, when we got together, I thought that we would be together forever. And I thought that we would have this. And I thought that this. And the attachment to that idea of what could possibly be is I would say probably one of the hardest things to let go of. And even when it comes to losing someone unexpectedly, uh, such as happened to me this week, is like the thing that hurts is the idea of, well, they shouldn't be gone this soon. It shouldn't have happened that way, right? So a lot of also what we are letting go of and what we need to learn to let go of is letting go of attachment, to ideas specifically. Mm, that's beautiful. Will you share with us a little bit? Cause we kind of poked the bear at that. And I would love to hear just kind of from a personal standpoint, what this process of writing the book was like for you, because I feel like, you know, we're talking about the book, we're talking about, you have so many stories woven in. It's so much of the work that you do in this world. It's so much, of it's a culmination in a lot of ways. And so I would love to hear about, I got to, the reason I asked this everyone is because I got to hear the behind the scenes. And I think it's, it's really important to hear the value of just you creating this book and pouring into it and how you changed along the way. And also how that will impact the people who get to read it. 
Yeah, there's actually, I actually wrote it in the book when I texted you the one day um, about, you know, I was having resistance. I was having a lot of resistance to writing certain pieces of the book, uh, specifically chapter six. Um, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but, you know, chapter six was a very difficult for one for me and, and several other ones were actually quite difficult because the actual book is written. Each chapter begins with a story about myself and my travels and things that I've done uh, in my life that allowed me to utilize these techniques and tools that I teach in the book. Because I know for me, it's a lot easier to see in like, oh, how do other people use this, right? So each chapter begins with like my story and about how these tools sort of played a part for me. And then it gets into the theories of that chapter. And, you know, one, it was really interesting as a writer to go back and forth between storytelling and like real on theory, like theoretical, scientific. It was, it was quite a, just even that in and of itself was like, what did I do to myself and why did I do this? (laughs) Um, But I think even more so, especially with the storytelling, like there were nights I was up just like sobbing Um, and it felt great and awful and all the things. And anyone who knows me knows that I embrace feeling. Um, because feeling is teaching us something and, you know, but it was, it was really quite therapeutic in some ways, like going over some of the stuff that happened in my life and, and putting it onto paper and really saying like, what did you learn from this? Like, I always kind of knew it inside, uh, but to translate that into something that other people can learn from is quite an experience and to, and to also turn it into something people can learn from and try to put it in an interesting, amusing, easy to understand way. Like it was, it was hilarious. Um, Some nights I was just like, why am I doing this? Uh, But when the end result came out, like I was just so, I was so pleased with it. And those who have read it so far are so pleased with it. But I think for me, it was really like, it was a great one reminiscent journey of my past, like 10 to 15 years of my life. Uh, and two, it allowed me to come to terms with things and, and again, see personal development journeys are never over. Right. And I think it's funny. Like I've heard, I heard someone say to me recently, oh no, I'm fine. I'm fully very traumatic event. You know, when they were younger and like, oh no, I'm fine now. I don't need to work on anything. Anything. Are you for real? Because I don't believe that, (laughs) you know, we always have things to go on and and I'm so lucky to be part of a group of people with you and with yourself, Dana, and all of our coaching friends and all of that who are constantly working on ourselves. But I also consider myself someone who's worked on myself for a very long time and very deeply. And writing this book got to some crevices in there that I don't think had seen the light in a little while. And uh, it was it was amazing. And I, and I hope that I turned it out in a way that can help as many people as possible by, by understanding what I went through and the processes that have been put in place to, to get out of that. Right. Like I was learning this whole time. I was learning how to do it myself. And it's like, you know, I've seen in my program, live your dreams, like my experiences have now helped others do what took me like 10 years to figure out and do. And it has helped others do it in a period of weeks. Right. And it's like, oh my gosh, yes. All of this pain and all this work and all this, whatever it is, it's serving its purpose in my opinion now by helping other people achieve similar things in such a shorter amount of time. Yeah. You collapse the timeline. And I mean, if that's not what we all want and need, is, you know, you've gone through it and paved the way and been the test, you know, the the tester. And so then you got to take what works, re- release what doesn't work and bring it all together in a way that is really freaking effective. And I mean, when I learn, when I read books, I don't just learn 
I don't just want to read the book for the sake of reading. I want to read so I can take what's in there and use it. And I think that anyone who reads this will understand like, wow, this is, it's, it's more like it's an entertaining way that you tell things in a really beautiful way and with story in your life. But also it, it's like a pocket manual. <laughs> like, what did you say? A guide, a guide to living in the modern world. A guide to thriving, thriving in our modern world. To thriving in our modern world. And it is, it's like, because as we're learning new things and as we're, you know, becoming aware of our thoughts, as we're choosing new thoughts, as we're dealing and accepting with the things that come up, as we're learning to release and let go, that takes practice and awareness and consistently being willing to look at your stuff and feel what's coming up and to have this book as a reminder, you know, to turn back, to look at it, to use it as a reference book. That is where the value comes in even more because I guarantee, and all of you who get the book, we will put the link in there. It's candicejames.com slash book. So really simple, wonderful link. But as you read that, you'll realize that it's not just a book you read and you're like, check, I read that, but it's a book that you'll really start to embody and use it as a manual and a guide for your life, something you can consistently come back to to help you. And I'm excited most about that. (laughs) (laughs) And that was my intention. And um, thankfully, that has been the response uh, since getting it out in some pre pre release copies to some people is that, you know, and and even at the end of each chapter, there's like a key learning section. So it's sort of like, let's recap what we learned. Let's so you can come back to this. And if you need to, you know, recall, recall what the lessons were from this chapter. So And may I just read, I'm just going to go ahead and read a quote from, this I believe was from your publisher or your editor. Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, I'm I'm flexing for Candace. So she would never, she does not, she would never (laughs) probably approve of me doing this, but I'm going to do this live because I remember when Candace received this feedback from the editor who read her book and had minimal edits, by the way. (laughs) But Candace shared this with me and I felt emotional and tearful because I just was so proud and inspired by what you've done. But she wrote, this is Candace's editor, who she didn't know beforehand. She wrote, it wasn't until Brene Brown and Gabrielle Bernstein that the millennials had strong female voices for their life challenges. I would put your book in that category a book with longevity that will resonate with readers for years to come and be read over and over. Mm. I remember reading that and crying. (laughs) I had spent all this time getting the book prepared and sent it off to the full manuscript to the editor and I, she's like, okay, well I've sent back your feedback or like her feedback. And, uh, it was so positive and that's how she started it. And I just like burst into tears and was like, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, it was all not for not. So yes, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're right. I probably wouldn't have said that, but I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to because and I think that's such a beautiful way to kind of bring it all together is that, you know, this is, it's exciting. It's you've poured in so much into this and been so intentional to make sure that it is of value. You know, I know a lot of people write books as it's like they want to write a book and (laughs) they're like, okay. And it's more about them. But I know for you, this is really more about while you were able to process so much along the way, of course, it's really about the reader. And so that I'm is, is just a really beautiful experience that you've created for those who, when you all get to read it. And this is what's so fun is the book comes out. So you, it comes out on the 17th, June 17th. So if you're listening before then, you'll go to candicejames.com slash book and you can pre-order it. And when they pre-order it, they get a few bonuses, right? So if you guys want to pre-order 
obviously the book in itself is reason enough to order the book. It's on Amazon. It's called Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Life with Candace James. And that's Candace, K-A-N-D-I-S-F-Y-I. But it's That's wonderful enough, but you've put together some really fun bonuses that I, of course, know about because we've talked through them together in our magical morning. But do you want to share those as well? Because if if you guys love Candace as much as I do, then you're going to want to partake in the bonuses, which you just get from ordering, pre-ordering the book. Yeah. So I'm also hosting a live workshop, um, which is overcoming the six biggest mind traps that are holding you back from crushing your goals and living your best life. So there is uh, there are six major mind traps which we will go over inside of the workshop. And it's a live workshop, so your questions could get answered. We will be chatting. It'll be all that sort of good stuff. Um, and not only just, you know, what are the six mind traps, but how do we overcome them? What principles, what tools can we use that will actually allow us to recognize which ones are getting our in our way in that moment and then what we can do to overcome and pass through those without them holding us back. So that's one thing. So that'll probably be a couple hours, two to three hours of a workshop, which will be amazing. All of my clients who I've taught this to in the past uh, still use it and use it with like their spouses and their friends and to be like, oh, which mind trap are you in right now? And it's a really powerful way to to recognize and get out of these, these things that we have inside of our head that are holding us back. Um, and also uh, there is the Better Than a Book Club book club. <laughs> I did spirit fingers, everyone. It's, I'm excited about this book club. <laughs> Uh, and basically, you are invited to an online Facebook group where we will be talking about the book. And each and every day, I'll be showing up and reading a chapter aloud. So the audiobook is not ready now, and I'm not sure when it will be. However, uh, if you're keen for that, if you just pre order the book, submit that order number, then you can join the group and have access to me reading it live one chapter a day. So you can put it on while you're doing the dishes or doing the laundry or getting the kids ready for school or doing whatever it is that you're doing. And, you know, for those that love audiobooks, it's kind of a, a way to get that in there for you. And plus, we're going to be in there talking about the book. You can ask the questions. Um, and for everyone who pre orders, you get put into a draw to win a free one on one coaching session with myself. So that is a great opportunity for you to better understand how to put these practices into play in your own personal life. You know, if you're struggling with like, okay, I get that, but how does it apply to me or how can I do it? Uh, That's our opportunity to talk through that. So it's very exciting. Oh, so many goodies. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Amazing. Candace, thank you so much. I am so excited for every freaking person to read this book. And thank you for sharing more about your journey to that. And just so much of who you are has gone into this book. And so others can learn from it as well. Is there anything else that you want to share or anything else we didn't cover that you want to touch on before we close out? I don't think so. I think honestly, just my intention with writing this book is seeing so many people in their life needlessly suffering in these feelings of overwhelm and insecurity and self doubt and fear and anxiety and worry and da da da, all these things that are going on inside of our heads. And for so many people that I know, it it becomes this, like, how am I supposed to go out there and do the things I really want to do when I feel like I can barely hear myself think? And I know that it's possible to overcome those things. I know that with some practice and the right tools, that doesn't have to be that way, right? The Buddha says, pain in this life is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I just want to see as many people, my goal is actually millions, millions of people just wake up feeling a little bit lighter, seeing the world just a little bit brighter and feeling like, you know, they really can step out of their head and get into their life. And so 
my intention with this book is just to allow people a little bit more peace, a little bit more calm, and to really feel like, you know, yes, life can be better than this. Life can be awesome. And you can feel excited about it uh, instead of anxious or insecure or fearful or whatever is coming up in your head because we think our head is all powerful. Our mind is all powerful. And we need to realize that we are not our mind. And we need to learn how to use our mind instead of allowing our mind to use us. Amazing. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. And everyone, go get your copy. Pre-order the book, CandiceJames.com forward slash book. Tag us on Instagram at CandiceJames.kj. That's hers. It's K-A-N-D-I-S, James, J-A-M-E-S. Dot KJ. And we'll have all that in the show notes. And let us know when you've pre-ordered the book. Oh my gosh, we're so excited. And Candace, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. And go get the book. Go get the book. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans or find me on my website at alignful.com.